Uh, hi, everybody. So first, I would like to thank the organizers for uh, allowing me to talk. Um, so yeah, let's get uh, right to it. So today, I'm going to talk about uh, a fairly old theorem that was proven in the, the 60s. Um, sorry. So basically, a TN bot uh, proved a theorem that allows you to compute um, equivariant indices of a manifold uh, in terms of fixed points of a certain uh, compact Lie group action. And my, my aim is to extend this to the infinite dimensional manifold of base loops of SU2. So, so uh, what is the base loop group? Uh, let G be a connected compact Lie group. So the base loops we denote by omega G uh, are, all, are all smooth loops based on uh, the identity. So it's going to start at the identity element of G and end at the same point. Uh, so this is a an infinite dimensional Lie group. Uh, you you can multiply pointwise, and there are two natural Lie groups uh, acting on this. So first we have the maximal torus inside G, and this acts by pointwise conjugation. And we also have a circle group acting by rotation. Uh, however, we have to maintain the base base point. So instead we have a sort of a base rotation uh, given by, so once you rotate, you have to multiply back to make sure the base is still at the identity. Uh, and these two actions will commute with each other. Uh, so you can see the paper of uh, Tia Presley uh, for more details. I'll give um, the references at the end. Uh, so in fact, um, what's interesting about omega G or the base loop groups is that uh, it is in fact a symplectic manifold and the T cross S1 action that we described earlier is actually Hamiltonian with respect to the symplectic structure. Um, and the corresponding moment map is given by uh, two components. Uh, going into the the algebra of t equals s1. So on the s1 component, um, we have the energy function. Uh, so like some of you might be familiar with this, uh, this basically measures the, the energy of a loop. Uh, so it is basically uh, omega prime t squared, but because it's based, you have to uh, pull back to the, uh, to the origin. And the other one involves um, projecting the loops down to the Lie algebra of the maximal torus. Uh, so this is this component is called the momentum map. Uh, so the moment map has an energy component and a momentum component. And um, in Atiyah and Presley's paper, they use this moment, they cite this moment map, and uh, they prove a general generalization of the Gulliman Sternberg theorem, which says that uh, moment maps of finite dimensional symplectic manifolds are convex polytopes. Um, because this is infinite dimensional, you basically get uh, like an, an uh, if you say you get a paraboloid, uh, is you get a convex body that's not a finite polytope, but it just, it keeps uh, going on to infinity. And uh, I would like to take a brief detour here to talk about affine vowel groups. Um, so if you're familiar with uh, finite dimensional Lie groups, um, you may recall that the vowel group associated to type A minus one is isomorphic to the symmetric group of N elements, Sn. And uh, there is an affine version of this for infinite dimensional Lie groups. So uh, we're gonna denote the affine vowel group by uh, w bar, and it is isomorphic to the semi-direct product um, W semi-direct product Q, where Q denotes the Kuru lattice of S U N. Um, okay, so, so if you're in case you're not familiar with this, uh, that's okay. Um, what's important to remember is that there are certain generators for this. So for the finite vowel group, um, you have n minus one generators. Uh, S1, S2, all the way to S, N minus one. Um, the only difference is that 
for the affine version, you have just one extra generator uh, called S0. And uh, as a small example, um, the simplest example is SU2. Um, so that has a bulk group just equal to S2, which is the group with two elements. Um, it has core root lattice isomorphic to, to Z. Uh, oh, sorry, uh, should be S, S1. So that's just the trivial group. Um, so the, the affine value group for the affine SL2 is the semi-direct product, which is isomorphic to Z as a group. Uh, it has two generators, S1 and S0. Um, and there's no relation between them. So you, except uh, S0 squared equals one and S1 squared equals one. So um, these two, you can think of them as reflections with no relations between them. Uh, so now getting to the meat of the, this whole thing, um, this was the theorem proven by Atiyah and Bot. Uh, so to phrase it in uh, a simple way, assume that M is a manifold with a Hamiltonian G action and that the fixed point set uh, M uh, superscript G is finite, um, then suppose you have any G equivariant vector bundle V on M, you have the following equality. So on the left-hand side, you have the order characteristic. So um, this is the Dobo complex, uh, Dobo cohomology associated to this uh, vector bundle. So each cohomology group serves as a representation of the group G. Uh, so therefore, you can take the trace. And when you take alternating traces, um, you get a certain uh, virtual representation uh, because you have these uh, minus signs. Um, so that's what the left-hand side means. Uh, the right-hand side, well, it, here's the beauty of it. Um, like a priori, th this thing on the left-hand side is very hard to compute. But Atiyah and Bosch showed that um, they were able to uh, prove this in terms of data just around the fixed points. So uh, just to explain this, um, because P is a fixed point uh, and V is a G equivariant vector bundle, um, that induces an action of G on uh, B restricted to P. So we can take its trace. Uh, and also there's an induced um, representation of G on the cotangent bundle of M at P. And uh, th this representation has certain eigenvalues. So what you do is you take um, the identity map minus this induced representation and you find its eigenvalues you multiply them together. And uh, a TI bot basically is, is saying that it's enough to compute this fairly simple thing on the right-hand side, and you have an equality. Um, so that works for finite dimensional manifolds. Uh, so our goal is to extend this to the base loops, which is infinite dimensional. And uh, to start with, we will write this in a slightly different way. So instead of having uh, the denominator be the product of some eigenvalues, um, we're going to write R sub W uh, for, so this is, stands for a rational function, which depends on W. And I write R W because um, if you remember the uh, T cross S1 action, um, it was proven that the fixed points of this action are indexed by the bell group. So um, if we think back to the paraboloid I mentioned earlier, the fixed points are basically the vertices of that paraboloid. So basically for every um, fixed point, which is every element in the bell group, we get a certain rational function. So in the finite dimensional case, um, this rational function would just be given by uh, the, the product of all eigenvalues of identity minus uh, this induced representation. Um, so yeah, as you can see here, this denominator. Oh, sorry. 
And in this case, um, the character of the tangent cone around that point is exactly equal to uh, this, this product here. And uh, th this all works for uh, smooth manifolds. Uh, but as we'll see, um, our situation isn't so simple. So the first difficulty is that uh, this is infinite dimensional, so this theorem doesn't directly apply. However, we can take a filtration. So we have uh, x0 in x1, but, uh, so on and so on, where their union is equal to omega g, and each one of these is a finite dimensional space. And these spaces are called Schubert varieties. Um, so this might be familiar to you if you know something about Weick varieties. This is basically an infinite dimensional version. Um, so which brings us uh, to the second difficulty. The second difficulty is that Schubert varieties are general, generally singular. And in the case of um, omega SU2, uh, only the simplest one the two dimensional one is actually smooth. Every, everything else is singular. So again, this Atiyah Bot theorem doesn't directly apply. Uh, but we are saved by the fact that each Schubert variety has a well known desingularization. De and topologically, they're, they can be thought of as twisted products of spheres. Um, and so they're built on top of each other uh, by. Um, by twisting a certain uh, projectivized line bundle. Uh, so the four dimensional versions of this are basically Herzberg surfaces. The two dimensional version is uh, just the sphere. And then you, you keep adding on like more, more twisted line bundles. And uh, these are known as Bot Samuelson manifolds. Uh, so because these are smooth, um, this is where we will apply the Atia Bot formula. Uh, okay, so another quick detour. Um, I'm uh, so that's, sorry, sorry about this typo. I'm going to talk about pre quantum line bundles. So, a pre quantum line bundle over a simplistic manifold is a Hermitian line bundle with connection such that the curvature of the connection is cohomologous to omega. Uh, so, usually, like there's a normalization here. I think uh, it's over i sorry, times i over 2 pi. Uh, but for us, we're going to ignore that because um, it, it doesn't matter much for the purposes of our calculation. And suppose we have a movement map psi, then we can define this quantum operator uh, given by um, the fundamental vector field and uh, this movement map. So the point is that if M is Kähler, then we can use the Kähler polarization to get a representation of G on the space of holomorphic sections. And uh, that's what we'll do for omega G. So for omega G, we can um, uh, do this with um, the positive energy representations of omega G with highest weight lambda. So these are um, irreducible representations which correspond to certain line bundles. Uh, we call these L of lambda. Um, so, so we have uh, this proposition by Shrawan Kumar, who says that line bundles on omega G are parameterized by integers. So therefore the Prakar group is isomorphic to the integers. Um, so they're basically multiples of the zero with fundamental weight of uh, this affinity algebra. So once we're given these line bundles and we have this filtration by a Schubert variety, uh, we can of course restrict these bundles to each Schubert variety XW. And since we have this desingular, desingularization, um, maybe I can draw some. So we have a desingularization from the boss samuelson manifolds to the Schubert varieties, we can pull back any line bundle on the Schubert varieties uh, to get another line bundle 
a predefined environment. And uh, so in, in that way, we can consider the holomorphic sections of the, this line model here. And uh, use this, use the Atiyah bot theorem on this line model. And uh, so our results will um, mostly focus on the case where G equals SU2. And for this group, um, omega of SU2, uh, you can consider the reduced um, affine vial group. And this is isomorphic to uh, Z. And we have an, an ascending chain. So this is given by, I remember the two generators, S0 and S1. Uh, S0, S1, S0, 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 S0. And you just keep adding uh, alternating generators to the front. Uh, so we have this infinite ascending chain. And this chain corresponds to a filtration of Schubert varieties. So you will have x sub s0, x sub s1, s0, and so on. Um, and each one of them will have a uh, complex dimension, the length of this word. Uh, we'll denote the length n elements of this chain by wn. And in this way, uh, remember what I said earlier about fixed points, um, in the case of omega su2, they're indexed by the integers. Oh, sorry. Uh, so, yeah, so this is the Schubert variety uh, filtration. And for any reduced word, so by, re by reduced, I mean um, uh, there are no subwords that are equal to this. Um, and we can define this uh, sort of weird looking quantity, SW given by uh, e to the, uh, I guess, prefixes of this word applied to the simple root a i j. Uh, so don't worry if it looks complicated. This is just a sort of bookkeeping notation to uh, write a nice theorem at the end. And we're, we're going to denote um, S W N by S N for simplicity. And I uh, remember the func the rational functions from earlier. Uh, so these are these rational functions. Um, for each Wn, there is a rational function, and we're going to call that Rn for simplicity. And for each Wn, there's a Schubert variety. We'll, we'll call that Xn for simplicity. Okay, so here uh, we have our theorem. So the rational functions in the localization formula for uh, omega g are given by, so in the denominator, we have um, this product overall positive roots of the affine V algebra SL2. And on top, we have an alternating, uh, sorry, no, we have a signed uh, quantity involving this SM. And we have this extra term with e to the uh, W uh, applied to alpha one. Oh, sorry. Um, this should really be WM. So the uh, the word with length m applied to this simple root here, and uh, so how, how do we prove this? So remember, um, the Schubert varieties themselves are singular, so we must prove the formula for bot samuelson varieties or manifolds uh, using the Atiyah bot formula. And it's important to note that um, it suffices to do this on the bot samuelson manifolds because uh, the space of holomorphic sections of this, the pullback of this line bundle is isomorphic to uh, restricting the line bundle to Schubert varieties. Um, so even though this, the Schubert varieties are singular, uh, we can still carry out the, uh, the computation on their uh, desingularizations and we get the exact same thing as representations of T cross S1. Uh, 
And to prove, so this is what we get for each individual um, Schubert variety. So, uh, so again, this is derived by doing it on the boss Samuelson manifolds first, uh, because um, strictly speaking, the Atiyah Bach theorem does not apply to Schubert varieties. And uh, we get this, um, I guess, more messy looking formula. And uh, what's important to note here is that on the top, in addition to this quantity SM and this extra term here, uh, we have a sum over uh, what, what I call restricted partitions. So we define this restricted partition P sub ABC to be the number of integer partitions of C into at most A parts, all of which are at most B. Um, so this is a very restricted version instead of the normal integer partitions. Uh, but yes, th this formula will involve uh, these restricted partitions. Um, so, so the idea is that uh, if you have one of the line bundles that I mentioned earlier, um, and you want to compute the order characteristic, um, so you would use these as the rational functions. And in the simple case of uh, you know, smooth manifolds, the denominator would just be uh, a product of eigenvalues. Uh, and the numerator would just be one. But in this case, because uh, the Schubert varieties are singular, you get something a bit more complicated. And uh, one remark I will make is that, uh, so the order characteristics of these Schubert varieties are isomorphic to what are called Dima zero modules. Uh, so these are uh, finite dimensional submodules of the uh, of the entire irreducible representation. So in the past, um, in the literature, there was a formula to compute the characters of these Dima zero modules. Uh, but they, none of them were explicit or effective. Um, so basically, you had to define these uh, divided difference operators. So those are sort of like a discrete version of uh, differential operators. Um, and you apply them iteratively to the highest weight. And that does give you the, uh, the character of the Dima's ray module. But in our approach, um, we have these rational functions you can multiply by explicitly. Uh, so in this way, we can get a very effective formula for the same thing. Instead of having to iteratively apply um, these divided difference operators. And uh, just as in the finite dimensional case, um, you might recall that there's a coston multiplicity formula for calculating multiplicities of any given representation. Um, so we have something similar here. Uh, first, let's define capital sub beta mu to be the number of solutions to the equation uh, n sub alpha times alpha equals mu, where alpha is any positive root that's not equal to beta. Uh, and all these coefficients have to be non-negative. Uh, so basically, this is a I guess, fancy version of an integer partition, except we're excluding certain, uh, certain integers from being used. And of course, this is not just one dimensional. This is more like um, in, uh, in Zn, uh, how many vectors, how, how many ways are there of adding vectors to get a certain value? And uh, by reading off the rational functions derived in the previous sections, um, so if we recall, we had these rational functions. Uh, we can treat these as geometric series and just read off uh, any multiplicities in front of each weight. Once we do that, we obtain the following constant multiplicity formula for omega SU2. So our, uh, our proposition is that um, for K positive, uh, and lambda equals k uh, times the zero with fundamental weight. 
then the multiplicity of the weight alpha in the irreducible representation L lambda is given by uh, this following sum here. Um, so this is nothing fancy. Uh, we just did this by reading off this formula here. And uh, a priori, this is an infinite sum. But in fact, for each alpha, this will always be finite. Because um, if you look inside this bracket here, uh, so only finally many of these are actually uh, positive weights. Um, so, so therefore, only finally many of these will actually have non-zero partitions. And, and, and so no matter what happens, um, the right-hand side will always be a finite sum. Uh, that's why this multiplicity actually makes sense. Um, so uh, I should say that, so in principle, the same uh, method can be used to compute um, for the case of G equals SUN, not just SU2. Uh, in which case, so let me go back here. Um, so we expect that uh, the formula will be almost exactly the same, except that in this bracket, we would have uh, more terms at the end. So one for each um, alpha and so on. Uh, so this is our conjecture for uh, G equals SUN. 